Welcome to the CSSN channel. Our topic for today is how to restore the loss of smell from COVID-19. Subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube to enjoy the information that we share on a regular basis about medicine, weight loss, fitness, and sport addiction. One of the most common symptoms of COVID-19 is the loss of smell. How common is it? Why does it happen? How can we restore it? These are the questions that we are going to answer through this presentation. To create this presentation, we have used 28 references, including published articles and medical textbooks. We have prepared some slides for you. I'm going to talk on the slides and I'll be back at the end. Let's go with the slides. How to restore the loss of smell from COVID-19. Through this presentation, we are going to answer to three questions about the loss of smell from COVID-19. How common is it? Why does it happen? And how can we restore it? The loss of smell is one of the most common symptoms of COVID-19 infection. And actually, in some cases, it is the only symptom. It is interesting to know that the loss of smell is more common in mild forms of COVID-19 than in moderate to severe forms. And in most cases, it happens suddenly. How common is it? According to an article published on Harvard Medical School website, which is our reference number one, a majority of COVID-19 patients experience some level of anosmia, which is most often temporary. Analysis of electronic health records indicate that COVID-19 patients are 27 times more likely to have smell loss compared to patients without COVID-19. And also based on an article published on McGill University website, which is our reference number five, 30 to 80 percent of people with COVID-19 report loss of smell, which is also known as anosmia. According to reference number six, a meta-analysis shows three important findings. Number one, the overall prevalence of the changes in the sense of smell or taste in COVID-19 infection is 47%. Number two, the loss of smell and taste preceded other symptoms in 20% of cases. And number three, the loss of smell and taste was concomitant in 28%. This graph is from an article published in the PubMed on September 11, 2020, which is reference number nine. And here's the title of the article, Anosmia in COVID-19, Underlying Mechanisms and Assessment of an Olfactory Route to Brain Infection. As you can see from this graph, the loss of smell actually is going to pick slightly before the loss of taste. Basically, the loss of smell is going to pick around day three to four, and the loss of taste is going to pick uh, around day five to seven, and both sensors will get back to normal function within three weeks. What is the COVID smell? According to reference number six, the COVID smell or parosmia is often reported as a foul smelling rancid odor, sometimes like rotting flesh. This is why people may go to see their dentists because they believe this is caused by a dental issue. Why does it happen? Let's see what is the mechanism behind the loss of smell. A team of scientists led by Dr. Sandeep Robert Dara, a neurobiologist at Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts, found that supporting neurons in the nose, which is also known as sustentacular cells, are probably what the virus is infecting. And also two research scientists from University of Nevada in the USA and University of uh, Nicholas Copernicus in Poland showed the same results. This illustration shows where exactly the olfactory epithelium is located. It is located in the roof of the nasal cavity. Remember, the place in the body where the central nervous system is closest to the external world is the olfactory epithelium. Let's take a deeper look at the olfactory epithelium to see what it has been made of and what happens there 
in COVID-19 infection. This is the schematic illustration of the olfactory epithelium. As you can see, it contains three types of neurons marked in green, blue, and red colors for better understanding. The first type of neurons are olfactory sensor neurons. These are the ones that carry signals from the nose to the brain. They contain cilia, which are located in the mucus. When odorants sit on the receptors, they generate signals which will be carried by olfactory sensor neurons to the olfactory bulb in the brain. The second type of neurons are sustentacular or supporting cells. They support olfactory sensory neurons. How? They assist with odorant processing. They help maintain the cilia. They provide nutrients. Basically, supporting cells provide structural and metabolic support to olfactory sensory neurons. The third type of neurons are stem cells, and their job is to regenerate the damaged supporting cells and olfactory sensory neurons. As you can see in here, only supporting cells express ACA2 and TMPRSS2, the two groups of receptors that are important for COVID-19 infection. In fact, sars cov two uses these receptors to attach, penetrate, and infect the cells. Let's see what happens when you develop COVID-19 infection. When you develop COVID-19 infection, sars cov two will attack and infect supporting cells using these two receptors. When supporting cells got infected, they will be damaged and they cannot do their job, which was supporting olfactory sensory neurons. Therefore, olfactory sensory neurons cannot carry signals to the brain, which will be experienced as the loss of smell. Even though studies show the problem is in supporting cells, however, some believe that there might be slight problems where odorants bind to their receptors in here and in the brain as well. How to restore the loss of smell? The therapeutic measures are number one, reassurance, number two, olfactory training, number three, providing nutrients to regenerate the damaged supporting cells, number four, decreasing inflammation in the nose, number five, drug treatment. Let me explain briefly these five approaches. Number one, reassurance. For most people, the senses of smell and taste recover within weeks. In a study published in November 2020, 72% of people with the loss of smell and 84% of people with the loss of taste recovered their senses after a month. According to an article published in the JAMA Network on June 24, 2021, Persistent COVID-19 related anosmia has an excellent prognosis with nearly complete recovery at one year. Number two, olfactory training. There is evidence from before the pandemic that it can improve smell function in some people with such impairments, but it doesn't seem to work for everyone. Olfactory training is recommended when smell doesn't come back after one month but definitely it can be started earlier. Olfactory training is performed by patients themselves two times a day before going to bed and immediately after waking up in the morning for about 12 weeks. This involves sniffing four things that have a distinctive, easy, identifiable, and familiar smell. We have given you two examples in here. Example one, rose, eucalyptus, lemon, and clove oil. Example two, orange, mint, garlic, and coffee. Number three, providing nutrients to regenerate the damaged supporting cells. Alpha lipoic acid, ALA, 400 to 800 milligrams a day. ALA is the best supplement that can help restore the loss of smell. There are many published articles about that, and we have provided you here uh, three of them, references number 17, 21, 22, 
and reference number 27 is a medical textbook. Inositol or YWB8, 500 to 1000 milligrams a day, and intranasal YWB8. This is the most valid textbook in medicine, Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine. On page 199, you can read, there is also limited evidence that alpha lipoic acid 400 mg a day, an essential cofactor for many enzyme complexes with possible antioxidant effects, may be beneficial in mitigating smell loss following viral infection of the upper respiratory tract. How inositol or vitamin B8 works? You remember this slide, as I said before, some scientists believe that they might be also problems where odorants bind to their receptors in here. Let's take a deeper look at in here to see what happens. When an odorant binds to its receptor, this is going to stimulate uh, sodium calcium channels leading to depolarization and generating signals. This process requires intermediates. In fact, two intracellular messengers mediate this process. Uh, those two messengers are IP3, inositol 3 phosphate, and cyclic AMP. Inositol increases the production of inositol 3 phosphate, and the medication theophylline increases the production of cyclic AMP. This is why some practitioners uh, to restore the loss of smell from any viral infections, they may suggest inositol or the medication theophylline. Number four, decreasing inflammation in the nose. Definitely for that reason, practitioners, they may suggest topical corticosteroids. And number five, drug treatment. The first medication is called carovarine. It's a muscle relaxing drug. In medicine, it is used in the treatment of tinnitus. This medication reduces feedback inhibition in the olfactory bulb. And theophylline, which I explained the mechanism a few slides back, and oral corticosteroids. As a routine, these medications are not prescribed for restoring the loss of smell. But some practitioners may suggest them, especially if the sense of smell has not been restored after six, seven months. I really hope that you learned something interesting today because we make science easy to understand. Now you know. If you don't want to miss our next videos, you may subscribe to the CSSN channel on YouTube. To support us, you can share, like, or comment on this video. Until next time, stay safe, stay connected.